Yeah. It is good to be together, isn't it? Good to be in one place. I want to welcome you guys online as well. I know many of you are joining us from home today, and we're glad for that. Um, so, last night as I was preparing my heart, a lot of times on Saturday night, I'll get along with God and just, uh, you know, and so all these things are running through my mind because of everything that we're dealing with in the world. And then the Lord was like, just say, <laughs> he's like smiling at me, you know, like in, in, internally I could feel God smiling at me like, stop. So you ever want to put the brakes on and just go, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to stop and we're going to thank the Lord. So would you just bow your heads with me? And if right, out of the, uh, right out of your mouth, would you just thank the Lord? You can whisper it right there. Just anything he brings to mind, would you just begin to thank him for that? While you're watching online, would you just bow your heads and, and out loud, maybe your, your, your family will get to hear you say, thank you, God, for something. So begin to thank that. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day that we have. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you bless all of us so much. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food to eat. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here safely and Thank you, Lord, for the good health that we have. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the family, Lord, you've given me. Thank you, God, for their health and the good things that you've given me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this place to meet. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us so much to enjoy about life. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us friends that make our life richer. I thank you, Lord, that I had godly parents that followed your voice. I thank you, Lord, that you have good plans for our good future. I thank you, Lord, that none of this has caught you by surprise. I thank you, Lord, that you've got an answer for every question. I thank you, Jesus, that you can heal every disease. You can heal every hurt. I thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you've made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in today. I'm not going to give in to fear or worry. I'm not going to give in to all the other things. I thank you, Jesus, because you are with us. Amen. In the book of Psalms, between the stanza, there's a word that will appear, and it's called selah, S-E-L-A-H. And in Hebrew, it means pause. Hear now the word of the Lord. <laughs> Isn't it good to sometimes pause, put the brakes on, and get the truth refilled into our hearts? And today I'm going to walk through, and, and, and as part of that pause, I was thinking, you know, Sometimes I got to let my spirit catch up to my brain because nowadays my brain's on to something new. If, if I get a notification, if I get a new, new story that I want to read and with having my phone so quickly available, I can, I can get off onto something. My spirit never quite catches up with where my brain is and sometimes that pause helps. You know, over the last three months, we have all absorbed mountains of information mountains that we wouldn't have absorbed before information about COVID-19 we're all um, amateur epidemiologists at this point we know how it's transmitted we know how it doesn't get transmitted we know if it's a good thing or a bad thing and there's been a lot of information masks or no masks unemployment compensation PPP loans and then there's that mysterious money that showed up in our bank account that nobody will ever have to pay for. It's like money does grow on trees. We found that out. The government just gives it away, you know? And that's, that's good information because nobody's gonna have to pay for it, uh, you know? And then, sadly, we've, we, we've found out more information that, we, that maybe many of us did not know about the unjust treatment of certain people by people in authority. And then there's more information about the wrongs that have been done in the past that have come to light that need to be dealt with so that we can have a better future together, all of us in the United States, so that we can be a United States. Amen? That would be good. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of ways that you can turn your head and go, okay, that's what we need to focus on. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's what needs to be dealt with first. Oh, gosh. No, we got to fix that problem before we do all that. And before you know it, you can live your life with your blood pressure just about redlined <laughs> because of all the information that you've been gathering over the last few months. Add to that, there's the fatigue that is happening because you're just sick of staying home. Sick of seeing the same face every day. <laughs> Like, right, can, can we go hang out with somebody, you know? 
And then you're also sad, increasingly saddened by the people that you know it who have either contracted the virus or died from it this last week. As I told you last week, one of our congregants got the infection and their whole family was uh, exposed to one another at a graduation party and mom, her mom died this week from COVID-19 related illness. So there's that information that's in our brain. And in times like these, it was like God reminded me, Jesus is what I need and he's who I need. He is the what and the who. And that's my simple thought today, that with all the information that's about, that Jesus is what I need and Jesus is who I need today to help me with what I'm dealing with to help you with what you're dealing with. And and, and I'm going to give you four reasons why. And, and I love the amen, even through the mass, because I can, uh, all right, I can still hear it. So if you want to amen, if you've, you've always been wanted to be an amen person, but you didn't want anybody to know who it was, now you've got a mask. So see, you can do it. And people will look around and go, is that, no, it was, you know, it wasn't, you, it wasn't me. Anyway, so let me give you four reasons that we need Jesus. Jesus, number one, gives me help in my weakness. He gives me help in my weakness. There was, a, there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, which made her unclean to worship in, in, in the Jewish way of thinking. And, he, and she was near Jesus. And doctors couldn't fix her. She had spent all her money trying to repair what was going wrong in her body. And she saw Jesus. And she thought to herself, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just get to him, He can give me what I need. And so through the crowd, she crawls on hand and knees, and she touches his robe. The minute she touches his robe, something in her life changed. And Jesus looked around and said, hey, I feel like power has just left me. Who touched me? And Jesus' disciples said, duh, look around. Everybody's touching you. No, 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 no. Power has gone out. It says in Mark 5, 25, she had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she'd feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. If I can just get to Jesus. And I think with the mountains of information that we've received we got to remember as Christian people to see it all through the lens of if we can just get the things to Jesus, if we can get ourselves and our problems and our brain wrapped around what he does for us. See, we don't need another politician to tell us a better story about a beautiful tomorrow because we understand as Christian people the good news about Jesus Christ. But before you can understand the good news, you've got to understand the bad news about the condition of our world today. There is no politician on the planet that can fix what ails our world. Our world has a terminal disease called sin. Now, sin is a three-letter word you don't hear a lot talked about politically because it's not a political issue. In fact, people think we, we can legislate away these things that beset one another, right? Oh, we got to make a law about that, make a law about that. You think that's going to help change sin? It doesn't. It doesn't get to the heart of every human being. Everybody born on this planet has been born with a nature to sin. And that is to disobey God, to want my own way, to rebel against authority, to hate other people that I shouldn't hate. All of that is wound up in one three-letter word, sin. And Jesus is the only one qualified to deal with the issue of sin in humanity. Can't legislate it away. You can't tell them to do better. It won't work. We have something broken in us that needs to be fixed that can't be fixed in human ways it's got to be a divine solution to the problem and Jesus is the answer to the sin problem the infection of sin the terminal disease we're born with only has one way out there's only one remedy for it and it's perfect righteousness perfect righteousness is when I can behave 
in a way that makes me proud, that I can behave in a way that loves my neighbor as I love myself. See, I can't just make myself love my neighbor. I can't do it because there's something in me that wars against that idea until I give my heart to Jesus and I receive his perfect righteous love into my heart. Then all of a sudden I can love those who don't love me back. I can bless those who persecute me. I can forgive those who wrong me, not because I'm any better than I was yesterday, but when I have the love of Jesus inside of my heart, there's a way that I react that is different. Because what the world has given us is a load of garbage that says if we just elect the right people, if we just have the right health care in place, then all our problems will go away. But folks, we know as Christian people, the answer to the problem of what affects our world today is Jesus. And we have good news. He will save and set free anybody that comes to him in humility. Don't come to him with all the answers because you don't have the answers. He is the answer. And when I trust him, not only does he fix my sin problem through forgiveness with my heavenly father, he also deals with my inborn bent towards sin. He says, you know what, I, <laughs> I love the scripture that says Jesus came to save his people from their sins because there was no, no other way to do it. Every evil in this world has its roots in sin and Jesus comes to save us from that this woman was thinking to herself if I can just get to Jesus and I'm talking to some of you today your life's a mess you tried everything maybe your family's broken and I'm here to tell you today if you'll just get to Jesus and you'll allow him to touch you and change you. I'm getting emotional. Because this is an emotional issue for me right now. I've seen the brokenness in homes. When mom and dad decide to go their own separate ways. And I see the children trying to hold the pieces in place. I've seen those that are older being forgotten by their kids and their grandkids, the pain they deal with. If I can just get to Jesus, whoo, I want, I, I want to help, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all think, man, I'm, I guess all these problems have made Pastor a little too emotional, you know? <laughs> and maybe that's true. But I know that Jesus is what our world needs. Secondly, Jesus brings me hope in my storms. It brings me hope. I remember there was a time that Jesus, it says in, in Mark chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on to him ahead of him into Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them in the boat alone, he went up on the mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. (laughs) So Jesus put them into the boat, shoved them off straight into a storm. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. That's what I would think. I don't know what I would think. (laughs) The world's a guy walking. Oh, that's Jesus. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind wind died down. So Jesus put them in the boat, told, told them to row into a storm. Think about your current reality. None of what you're facing that's difficult for you to face has taken Jesus by surprise. None of the diseases that we face as a culture took Jesus by surprise. Our planet is desperately broken. And as Christians, we shouldn't panic. When sin happens, we should expect it. We know that when Jesus gives us life, he sends us into into this world that that it's not going to be perfect. 
He doesn't always shelter us from the storms, but he does come to us in our storms. He won't let me row by myself forever. At some point, as I keep on rowing, I understand that he does intercede for us when we're going through tough things in life. He gives me hope in my storms that, Lord, I know I'm not alone in this. I'm going to keep rowing. I don't know where you are, but I'm going to keep rowing. I'm going to hang on to hope. And remember my little hope rope? I've told you this before, but I always, I always like to make acrostics. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, I've got a little rope here that's it's not for anything special. But uh, Cameron, I want you to come up here and be Jesus for me, would you? You look like Jesus with a mask on. Oh, all right, all right. All right, so you're holding, you're holding the rope for me, right? All right? So if I find myself in a tough spot, okay, you can just hang on tight now because that's where I'm at. I had a friend of mine that was one time he went out mudding. He went out mudding in his truck because he, he had a Bronco that he thought couldn't get stuck in the mud. He got stuck in the mud. He got high centered and he needed a friend to come with a tow rope to tow him out of the mud. <laughs> because his four-wheel drive needed about eight more wheels to get out of the mud. Anybody ever been stuck in the mud like that? It's like, you ever been stuck in somewhere in life where you couldn't get out? Whether it's in physical pain or whether it's in, in, in just regret. And sometimes you get stuck in bitterness toward other people and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're looking at a million people that, that have done you wrong and you're just, oh, you're mad at the world. You ever, you, ever see, you, ever, you ever get stuck like that and all of a sudden Jesus says, hey, you're stuck. And what you do is you hang on to the rope. You start with H. I got hope in Jesus Christ. I don't have to stay here. I don't have to stay stuck because he's done it before. He's helped like me, people like me before. So there's the H in hope. He's done it before. But then I say, wait a minute, our faith matters. So I can get out of this if I can just reach and grab the rope. And that's the O. Our faith matters. I do believe that Jesus Christ is the only solution to where I'm at right now. So I need to hang on to him. And then prayer is powerful when I pray. I can get to Jesus and Jesus can get to me and he can get to my problem. That's good. And then E is everyone is eligible doesn't matter if I've been bad or good when I pray to the Lord I can hang on to hope and see the the closer I hang on I the closer I draw to Jesus and he pulls me out of the mess that I just found myself in and I'm right where I need to be amen so hang on to hope all right don't drop that rope <laughs> hang on to hope don't drop the rope say no to dope that's it uh, you know I, I can keep going all day you got I got more you got more thanks that's right thanks Cameron Jesus gives me hope in my storms but not only that Jesus gives me healing in my heart. Because sometimes our heart get bro it gets broken through life. It, it, everybody's suffered heartache. The people that have let you down, betrayed your, your, your friendship, sometimes betrayed a confidence. And I think about somebody like Mary Magdalene. You know, she was the first person, look at this in, in Mark 69. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first, this is on Easter Sunday, to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. The first person that Jesus appeared to on Easter Sunday was a woman who was broken beyond repair. Nobody knew what to do with Mary Magdalene. You got seven demons living in you. You are a mess. I don't know how it manifested itself. Doesn't tell us. But I do know that she was way broken. And, and a lot of people want to question the validity of the Bible. You know, the Bible was written by Christians after Jesus died. And, and they were just start trying to start a movement. You know, you can't really trust the scriptures because, you know, it's people trying to start their own thing. So, of course, they're going to paint Jesus in a good light. Well, let me tell you this. If, if Mark was trying to start a movement on his own and this wasn't true, he would have left this story out. Because in the ancient culture, women were not, they weren't even allowed to testify at trial. Their word was worthless. But look who Jesus comes to. First, he comes to a woman. He testifies to the reality of his presence to her. And it's, this is not just any woman. This is a messed up woman. <laughs> he doesn't go to the house of the king first. He starts with the one that was the most broken and had been healed of the most stuff. And, and, and it's amazing when I think about it. 
If, if you're trying to start a religion, this is the last story that you would put in an ancient document because women were, were basically property of the men. Nobody listened to woman, women then. See, Christianity is not anti-woman, just so you know. <laughs> Jesus was pro-woman all the way. I mean, he was, he was in the, making sure that they, their opinions mattered and their, their voice was valued. And I'd love to see that in here. Mary Magdalene, the one who had seven demons living and acting inside of her, got healing from whatever it was that pushed her down that path. I've met a lot of people in life as a pastor who have, who have gone through and lived through unbelievable trauma. You know, sometimes traumatic events, abuse in the home, will lead people down a dark road. And I don't know how Mary had the, what trauma led her the way that she went. And I've seen many people struggle to live normal lives after what happened to them so long ago. But I do know that Jesus doesn't waste a moment. And in this moment on Easter Sunday, by showing us the first person he wants to touch is Mary. It ought to set us free to understand that whatever brokenness that we live with right now, Jesus wants to heal it and wants to show up mighty in our life. Jesus brings me healing in my heart. He brings me hope when I'm down and in my storms. And lastly, he brings harmony in my home. Harmony in my home is what Jesus can bring. Because Isaiah prophesied he would be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Those are words that are listed to describe Jesus hundreds of years before he would ever live. See, Jesus can bring me help in my weakness because he is a wonderful counselor. He can bring me hope in my storms because he is the mighty God who knows the storm and can see through it. He can bring me help in my home because he is the Prince of Peace. And he can bring harmony everywhere I go since the Prince of Peace is with me, since he is my father, since he is, he's, he's on the job all the time, he is able to take care of every one of my needs. He is the King of kings and Lord over all creation. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. He can heal a hurt that no doctor could ever cure. He can bring calm to storms that rage around us. He is my all-sufficient Savior. He can bring harmony and wholeness to every broken home. He is our Prince of Peace. Amen. And he loves you. Now, I have good news. Sin is the big problem in our world. And Jesus came to save us from our sins. And as Christian people, the good news keeps on going. Not only does he want to save us from our sins, he wants us to be people and agents of reconciliation for the entire world. The world doesn't know this. The world still thinks in October we're going to elect a savior. Or November or whenever the election is. <laughs> October, nobody's getting elected, right? Who knows? But the world thinks that the ballot box is the answer. But as Christian people, we know the truth. And that's okay. It sets us free. It doesn't say we don't get involved in government. We should. We should have our voice be known to those who are in power. We ought to speak up for truth. Speak up for those who have been put down and pushed down. We want to speak up for the weak among us. That's what the Christians do. But we don't pin our hopes. And who's in the White House or in Tallahassee? or in, who's, We don't pin our hopes on all of that because we know that in their best days, they're still flawed human beings. Even when they're trying their hardest to do the right thing, they can make mistakes. But when I put my hope in Jesus Christ, I know that he is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace that can actually fix things. Don't you want to put your hope in something that actually works? Jesus is what I need. And I know it's easy to forget because we have so many news sources. But I'm going to ask you the question. Do you really know Jesus as your hope and your help? 
Or are you trusting in everything else? Have you taken on the label of Christian? But not necessarily the title of disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you a fan? Or are you a follower of Jesus Christ? There's a, there's a total difference. Yeah, I believe in God. No. Are you following Jesus? Totally different. See, one comes with a cost. When you follow Jesus, that means you're not following everything else. When you're a fan of Jesus, you can wave. You can sit in the crowd. You can go, woohoo! yeah, we love Jesus. Put your hands up and worship even if you're a fan. But when you follow Jesus, he might take you to a place you don't want to go. He might make you love people that you don't want to love. He might make you wear a mask when you don't want to wear a mask. <laughs> Harmony. Prince of Peace. That is our Savior Jesus. Do you really know Jesus as your hope? Do you really follow him in your life today? I got good news. Jesus can save this world from their sins. He's left me to tell you and he wants you to tell others as well. But before you do that, you got to make him Lord of your life. So I want you to bow your heads right where you're at. Jesus is what you need. You've got sin in your life you need to get rid of. And the word says when we confess our sins, he's faithful and he'll forgive us from our sins. So in your own life, right where you're at, whether you're watching online or in person here, if there's something standing between you and the Lord, any sin in your life, would you just confess it to him? Say, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't be doing this. Just confess it to him. It's not going to be a surprise to God. He already knows it. He already knows the storm you're in because of it. Now, will you just say in your own heart, I want to follow Jesus. I understand he's the way to change the world. And I want to cooperate with his rescue plan. I don't want to push him off anymore. I don't want to make excuses for why I don't follow him. I'm going to put my whole trust in him and my whole heart into following him no more double-mindedness if that's you say no more god no more double-mindedness i'm all in with jesus i want to follow him amen amen and we believe that whom the sun sets free they are free indeed so if you prayed that prayer to jesus that you want to follow him we're going to ask you, if online there's a little number you can text. I'm going to follow. You, just, you want to text the number and, and put the words follow. We want to follow up with you. If you've made that decision in this room today, you can, you can let us know because it's the best thing you'll ever do. But you're going to need help in the journey. You can't do it alone. One of the reasons that we meet together is there is strength in numbers. I know your story. You know my story. And so it's together. We come together as the body of Christ. We can help each other. And we're going to get through this weirdness of the virus together. We're better together. Amen? And we know that Jesus is going to bring his healing power. And it's too difficult for us to face on our own. 